Hello! So today we're going to do some VOR hopping around London in the Black Square TBM850 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So half the reason for this is somebody asked, he said, could you do another flight in the TBM just to look through how things work and to illustrate some, maybe some navigation along the way as well. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So if we go and jump inside the aeroplane, first thing we're going to do, if you look from where we are on the ground, we're quite tight against all of the vehicles. So before we start the propeller whizzing round or get anybody into trouble, we're going to press Shift and P, and we're going to ask the the nice man in front of us to, or nice lady, is it, uh, to push us back a little way away from the uh, the vehicles. So we just wait for that to happen. Okay. So then we'll press Shift and P again to stop the pushback, put the parking brake back on, and we can start thinking about firing the aeroplane up. Okay, so we move the crash bar out of the way. I'm going to use the mouse to control where we are looking around the cockpit as we do this to make it nice and stable and easy. Uh, we move the battery to, or the power source to battery. We put the generator switch in the middle. We put the ignition to on, or all the way forwards. We'll put it back to auto later. Starter doesn't go on just yet until we've checked lever positions and things like that. So the fuel condition even needs to be back. The RPM can be back at the moment. If we just have a look down here, do we need to go and do anything? So we can go and put the inertial separator on so we don't suck any rubbish into the engine while we're firing it up. Okay, so let's go and start the engine. So start it on and you will see the propeller will start turning. There it goes. So we keep an eye on the NG. When it comes through about 15% we can advance the fuel condition lever. So we're just watching this needle it comes up to about 15% automatically. So we advance the fuel condition lever. That obviously introduces fuel and ignites it because the ignition is on. Engine continues to fire up. And we'll see the temperature coming up. Sorry, the NG coming up. Uh, when it gets to about 50%, you can turn the starter to off. And the engine runs itself now, essentially. But we leave the ignition on until we have climbed away from the airfield. Okay, so engine is essentially running. So we'll leave it on um, low idle at the moment. And we'll go and turn some systems on. So radio master switch can come on. You can see I've gone for the very basic layout using the KX155 setup for the nav and comm radios. We're not obviously not going to be using comm radios today. We're just going to be flying along and I'm going to be talking a lot. So I apologise in advance for my wittering on. So we'll calibrate the altimeter while we're waiting. We'll also go and put the master switch on for the autopilot while we're sitting here. So it will sit in its test state for a little while. Overhead, now we've got an engine running, we can go and turn on the gyro instruments. So that's doing the vacuum for all the gyros. Um, we can put the nav lights on because obviously the engine's running. Uh, we don't do the strobe until we get to the runway. Don't do taxi just yet, not until we actually go to taxi. Okay, we can turn on the EFIS. It's this little switch is just hidden under there. There it comes. Oh, look, you can see the attitude indicator is starting to stabilise. That's looking good. It takes a little while. Let's put the outside air temperature into centigrade so we don't, so we know if we're getting near freezing, to be honest. Let's put the PETA heat on. We'll be pulling away shortly. So let's go and have a little look at the chart in Navigraph of South End. So you will notice I'm not showing the aircraft location. That is on purpose. So we have to do the work in our head to figure out where we are. Same is true in Little Nav Map. I've also got it running. We're not showing where we are. We could do. We've got the little yellow aeroplane. I'm turning that off. Yeah, so we're not going to see where we are. We're going to have to work out what we're doing. So we're going to take off 
and we want the heading bug on our aeroplane to be 234 degrees, which will give us a reference on here of the runway direction. So, 234 for the heading bug. So we just spin it round. There we go. And then we want the course to represent the, the first heading we're going to turn towards after taking off, which is 186 degrees over towards the Detling VOR. So we're going to move the course on this. This is the HSI, or Horizontal Situation Indicator, to, uh, what did we say? 186 degrees. It doesn't have to be exact. So there we go, 186 degrees on the course. And we're using VOR1, so let's go and tune in the Detling VOR. So it's actually, Navigraph is better at this than Little Nav Map once you start to see these kind of bearings and headings. So let's have a look at our full route that we're going to be flying. So you can actually see the frequencies underneath each waypoint look without having to go and clicking on anything. So Detling's 117.3. So we come into the nav radio and we tune in 117.30. And we transfer that to the active frequency and the HSI, famous last words, should come to life and it hasn't because it can't see it yet. It will come to life when we're in the air. Okay, so we've got the fuel system to set up. We've got to put the bleed onto auto and we're going to go and put the auxiliary boost pump to auto. Notice we didn't need the boost pump to start the engine. And we put the fuel select onto auto so we don't even have to worry about switching between tanks. It will do it automatically as we fly along. Okay, so in terms of configuration, the aeroplane is pretty much ready to go. We'll go and put the transponder on already. And, oh, it might be worth setting a target altitude for the um, for the altitude pre-selector. Obviously we can't arm it yet because we're not in the air. But I think we can set a, a target climb rate. I think it might reset it though as soon as we engage autopilot. We'll find that one out. Again, it's one of those things you learn if you know the aeroplane inside out. And I don't fly it often enough to know it inside out. So, sorry about that. <laughs> To get, if we want some distance measuring equipment, which is often quite handy, um, I think this will yeah this will give it us in the top corner of the HSI, but we can also get it on this separate nav system up here. So we could tune this in as well to 117.3 just to see how that works. So it, again, it won't come alive until we're in the air. Okay. So we need to. You can see the fuel tank selector just switched over. We'll go to high idle now. We'll, we won't go to f max RPM just yet because the aeroplane will start racing across the tarmac. We're just going to turn the aeroplane gently around. Um, we should put the head tracking on so we can easily see around ourselves while we're also controlling the aircraft. Apologise to this chap whose head we're about to hit with the end of the wing. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> OK, let's taxi out. Yeah, so the main aim today is really just to have a play with navigation and without cheating on the map. So we're essentially treating Little Nav Map or Navigraph as a paper map and looking at the instruments and figuring out where we are by reading the instruments, which should be good fun. So we'll just hold here before we go on to the runway. Parking brake on, put the strobe lights on, put the landing lights on. We should have had the taxi light on, it's a bit late for that now, but 
it will automatically turn the taxi light off by the way when you lift the undercarriage on this aeroplane I noticed that the other day again as I said you leave ignition on during takeoff again technically we should have the um, where's the fuel setting here it is the boost pump should be on on for takeoff but we're going to leave it on auto that's what, probably why we're getting a warning I would imagine it's quite interesting in aircraft of this vintage it's often very difficult to figure out what they're complaining about it's not like the modern aeroplanes where there's a little readout that tells you exactly what it's shouting at you about Okay, let's just line up on the runway. This um, this is the Pilot Plus version of South End. It's quite heavy on frame rate, but it's a wonderful airfield. It's got lots and lots of features in it, you know, that look very good. So, max RPM on the propeller. Take gently and we're in the air. Gear up. You can see the the taxi light went out up there. So let's go and sort that out while we're here. So again we're just following the heading bug as we climb out. Coming up through 400 feet, 500 feet, south end. could trim the ailerons and the elevators if we wanted to so the flaps can come up I've already done that and the propeller and power can come back a little bit okay so should we go and get the autopilot on the ore damper on and you can see it is going for a thousand feet a minute. Is it going to do it automatically? So we're going to 2,000 feet, we said, but we're too close to it to arm it. So it's just centering up on 2,000 feet. Look, it's going to go for altitude hold mode, which is already on. Because we got it into the neighborhood already. Okay, so we want to be flying towards that VOR. Yeah? So you can see we've just crossed the beam as we were talking. So if we spin heading mode round and put this on heading mode now, it was on pitch hold previously. So when you engage the autopilot with no modes on it will go into pitch hold mode. Oh, sorry, pitch and roll hold. Okay, so we've got 13 miles to run. If we go, now at the moment you can see we are just off of the 186 degree course. So in terms of the map, we took off, we just missed the turn. Now we've made our turn towards 186 degrees. And we are just off to the right. See, because the, the line is to the left of us on the HSI. We're 12 miles out from the VOR station. If we wanted to get exactly onto the line, we can just press nav because we're close enough to it. And you will see the aeroplane will bank left. Famous last words. It's because it's so close to it, it's not going to do it, look. If you were to give it more of an intercept angle, you'd see that happen. So if we go back to heading mode, it's going to turn in towards that angle. And then if we go nav again, you'll see it's going to gently roll right, because otherwise it's going to cross over the, the track. So I guess the um, the thing to take away here, we can turn the initial step off by the way. The thing to take away from this is 
that VOR navigation is not an exact science. So we're eight miles away from the Detling VOR. Yeah, so we're flying along here. We're eight miles away, so we're about somewhere here. <laughs> so the next VOR station we'll be going for, let's do this on here, will be the Mayfield VOR. And we'll want to change the heading to 226 degrees to Mayfield at 117.9. So we've got VOR2 over here, so we could go and tune that in. We've got seven miles to do it in. So I'm going to do this without the head tracking to make sure I can do it quickly. So we want 117.9 uh, on VOR2. Switch it over and you'll see this come to life. And if we sw swing the OBS knob around, we can see what the direction is to go to it. There, that's the from angle at the moment. Oh, the sim has just frozen. Give it a few seconds. I don't know why it does that. Some quirk about my hardware. There we go. So we've got the, the white arrow is now indicating to the VOR. So we can see it's, at the moment, it's 210 de 10 degrees off of our nose to go to here. But we want to be flying 226 degrees. So 220, 210, 226 is about there. See, on a, an analog instrument, it's not super accurate. So remember, if you think in terms of us flying along, the next leg is off at an angle, so it's showing it to be to the left of us. So what we could do is spin our heading bug around, knowing that the autopilot is following VOR1 at the moment, just to show you how you can dance between the instruments. We'd line the heading bug up, put ourselves back on heading mode. We can watch this, but we're now free to reconfigure this to match that. So we want 226 degrees on the course. 226. So when the course deviation indicator comes across our nose, we know we're almost on top. It'll be interesting to see this happen, actually. So at the same point we cross over and lose the signal from that VOR station, we should see the other one, but we also need to change the frequency as well, remember, to 117.9. And this is why you can have a standby frequency. Here it comes. So we've just gone over the top of the station. So if we change frequencies now, we can see the next VOR station. We're almost on the line to it. Obviously, we've just overrun it. So we can see we're now running away from the line. So if we go and turn our heading round to go the same direction as the VOR, we now have 23 miles to run until we get to the next VOR. So I've just overlapped that slightly on the heading, so we'll pull that into the middle. So we've got this 23 miles to run, so it's a 25 mile leg according to Navigraph. That's probably been rounded up, hasn't it? Can you see? The, yeah, it doesn't show it on the little nav map either any more accurately. So we've now got 22 miles to run. <laughs> we've also got to take into account winds aloft. Obviously you could get this via ATIS, we can cheat and look on little nav map. And we can see actually there's a 45 knot wind. My word. And you can see it on the instrument there, look, relative to us, it's across our nose. Which is why we're not getting any closer to the line, even though we're on a slight intercept. So if we go another 10 degrees or so to the right, we'll pull ourselves back onto the track we wanted to be on. So at the moment, we're over here, but we're to the left. Yeah, so that's what the CDI means here. It's we're to the left of the line. And obviously the distance that line moves away is how much more extreme, you know, how far away to the left we are. Okay, so we can play the same game with VOR2 again with going to the next station while we're flying along. Um, so we could tune in the Goodwood 
VOR 11475 on VOR 2. So we want 11475. Transfer that to active and you'll see this come to life. There it goes. And we want to be flying 253 degrees down to Goodwood. So we can change the Omni Bearing Selector to 240, 50, three's about there somewhere. So at the moment it says we're off to the right of that line. Notice how slow it is and it wanders around. It's because we're a long way away from the Goodwood VOR. But you know, we're right over here. If you look on this, we're 17 miles still from Mayfield. So we're over here somewhere. And we're, we're getting closer to the line. We're not racing over it, are we? That's because of that crosswind. So you can see this is wobbling around all over the place. So this aeroplane's very good in that it simulates the, um, the radio reception. Now we're flying along, by the way, we can put the ignition back on auto. And it will only come on if it's needed. So we're zooming along at just over 200 knots. Quite happily, if you go and look at the engine gauges, look, we're in the green on torque, we're in the green on the propeller, in the green on the NG, and the inter-turbine temperature is in the green as well. And engine oil is looking great. So nothing to panic about just yet. We've got lots and lots of fuel. And we've got the fuel selector on um, auto. So it's going to keep the needles fairly even with each other on its own. We will keep an eye on it though. I'm quite surprised at that discrepancy there. Okay. Or oh, disparity, I should say. Um, so we're approaching. This line's getting closer. Yeah? But we're still 12 miles out. So it's, it's wandering back away again. So you can't take the reading from a VOR a long way away. Kind of as read. We can get a distance measuring on that using the other radio, by the way. So if we go to 11475 on this one. And this will just give us the numbers. So it's 93 miles away at the moment. Which is why it's wandering around so much. Ten miles to go. Now we've gone off, we've crossed over that line now, look. The, the wind oh, it hasn't really moved around. We've just finally made it across the the line. So if we f if we fly the line, just using heading mode, you'll see the wind push us back onto it. So if you watch that CDI, once we straighten up on going the same direction as our course, we're going at the moment we're over here, but we're just to this side, and the wind is going to push us back onto the line. So you'll see that needle gently fall back in because we're being hit by a vector of about, I don't know, tw 20 knots maybe, 15 knots. It's hitting the side of the aeroplane. So that needle is going to fall back in. Or, or should I say we are being pushed back onto the 226 degree line. So seven miles to run. And you can see this is slowly getting closer. So we can prepare the frequency for NAV1 to switch over so the autopilot can follow it. So we want it on 11475 to be ready to go. Okay, so 11475 is now the standby frequency on NAV1. So we're six miles out. When we get a little bit closer, we'll switch over. We can also play that game we played before. See, no, notice that we're now on the line. So let's go and turn a little bit into it, just three or four degrees, just to stop ourselves drifting any further away. And 
we can go back to heading mode on the autopilot which well, we're already on heading mode which means we are free to change the course so the course we want to be going for that next leg is 253 degrees so let's go and change the course to 25240 253 yeah so then we can watch the CDI and the moment it starts to Oh, so when this one comes into the middle, then we can change it. Remember, this is still tuned into the old one. So it's this one we're keeping an eye on. We're still 2.4, 2.3, 2.2. So then we're going to switch over to the next one. It'll suddenly jump to be 100 miles away. Ready? Go. Or 36 miles away. That's interesting. So that nautical miles over there is wrong. Where's it getting that from? Yeah, because we're only 34 miles away. We've just passed through Mayfield. We're now going along. So why is this reading 85? Oh, it's on Arnav. That's why. I'm being an idiot. There we go. Yeah, that makes sense. I apologise for that. I completely missed that, that, which mode it was in. This radio has many functions. It can do RNAV, it can do VORs, and the, the RNAV functionality is fantastic. I'm not going to get into it today. I've done a video about it elsewhere in the channel. You can essentially set up um, simulated VOR beacons, which is what it was doing. So you can set up a, a VOR at a frequency, a radial, and a distance. So it was pretending the VOR was somewhere else other than its real location. Now I've put it back into VOR mode, it's showing its its true self, which is we're now 33 miles away from it, which corresponds with what this is showing, the same thing. And so is VOR2. We're all tuned into the same thing. Notice the different presentation techniques here. So, oh, we're, we've been busy flying off. What we've done is carry on flying in a straight line because we're in heading mode. Yeah, so we've now gone off to the right of the beacon, so or the right of the course. So let's just fix that. So if we... This would be good, actually, to show you how this works. So I'll put us on a an intercept course. So we'll go... Whoops. We'll go west, which is going to intercept the line. So we've, we've flown out this way in a straight line, and now we're turning west, which will put us over the line. Yeah, but it's going to take a while to cross over it. So what we'll do is go to nav mode. And it will capture the beacon. And then, see, it's going actually steeper, look. It's turning into the line. And then it will turn left when it thinks it's on top of the line. And start chasing it. So watch the attitude indicator. Actually, if we look up slightly, you'll see the horizon move all of a sudden. There it goes. So it's turning left in towards the course. To hopefully make the course deviation indicator to center it up so it thinks it's on the course into the VOR. So we are, how far away are we? 28 miles out. So we can figure out where we are. If we do a measure, oh, we can't do it in here. We can do it in here. If we measure from here, is it 28 we just said? 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So we are about there. Yeah? So we could actually do that and put a, a user point in the map, in little nav map, if we wanted to can just put those in of you know places where we knew we were you could write the time in if you were doing proper you know simulating paper navigation you could alter the user points and put um, you know name the time or you know type the time into them as you're going along so we're flying along now towards the Goodwood VOR we're 26 miles from it so again, let's get ready with the next thing we're going to do. So we want to leave Goodwood on a course of 316. 
yeah, and do it and fly that 316 course for 12 and a half miles. Note that we haven't got GPS, so having this hazel waypoint is useless to us, but we have got the VOR station we can fly from on a course of 316 degrees. So what we'll do is we'll go back to heading mode. We'll line the heading mode up with what we're doing, which was about there. We can just keep an eye on the CDI on the way. And then we can get the 316 degree course ready on the course marker here, but we're not going to do it just yet. We'll wait until we actually roll over it. So for the moment we can leave it in nav mode. Just let the aeroplane follow the HSI. We could play games with VOR2 to do it. So 316 degrees. So if we were to say 316 is about there. So when this swoops in, we'll obviously we'll be right on top of the the beacon. But we can also change the course of nav one at the same time. I'm just looking around briefly to see I don't know if there's a way of telling the aeroplane which distance measuring equipment you can choose nav one or nav two. I'm not sure if you can choose the HSI which one to use. Oh yes you can, you just press the nav button. So, yeah, okay. So if you want the autopilot to be following nav 2 instead, you can just press the nav button to cycle through. Unfortunately there's about four different programs in here because it's got the um, RNAV as well and the GPS. So it's not just a case of toggling. You'd have to cycle around all of the various options to come back to it. OK, so we're 19 miles to run until Goodwood. It's funny, isn't it? We've done all of this without taking one look outside and it's gorgeous outside today. <laughs> So essentially when we get to the VOR, all we need to do is change the course to 316 degrees. The interesting thing is we're flying along this line, yeah? If we want to fly that course, if we were to do it now, the aeroplane would turn left and then turn right. Because it would take the, or it might even take a right turn. N knowing that aer the aeroplanes tend to try and get about a 45 degree intercept to the course, we're flying along here, it would probably turn and cut the corner off to get onto the 316 degree course. So we're 15 miles out, so we can figure out where that is if we go and look on here and do a measure there. We're about here somewhere then at the moment. So if we right click, put a user point in. So that's where we were the last time we checked. Yeah, we're on the 253 degree radial to the Goodwood VOR at 11475. And we were 15 miles from it. It's pretty straightforward really, isn't it? Should we have a look from outside while we got some time? Yeah, you can see that where the fuel selector is evening up the fuel tanks now. Hopefully we have enough fuel. surprised if we don't. If 
we don't, we'll be making alternative arrangements for a landing somewhere. So, 11 miles to run until we get to the Goodwood VOR. And then after that, we turn right to 316 degrees to hold the 316 radial from Goodwood. So, as we leave Goodwood, the little white arrow will flip to the other side of the HSI and the white arrow here will flip to the other side. And that indicates that you're travelling away from the VOI or you're not. You're, the course you have tuned is from, not to, depending on where you are in relation to the VOI at the time. Eight miles to run. Still at 2,000 feet. It's fairly flat in the south of the UK, so we haven't really got to worry about hills. Which And there's a lot of VOR stations around in the south of the UK, which really lends itself to this kind of exercise. So the weather radar's on, but there's obviously nothing for it to see. It's a bit of a shame, but oh well. Should brighten the instruments up a little bit. <laughs> we could slow the propeller down a bit. not harming it though. Okay, five miles to run. So remember, this is pointing at the direction for the next leg. So when we come up to the VOR, suddenly this will sweep in, unless we go early. So we're somewhere over here. We are four and a half miles out. So if we were to change to 316 degrees now, you'll see it cut the corner. Let's watch it happen. So we're three miles, I'll do it with two miles to go. So we're three and a half miles out at the moment. And we'll sweep the course round to, what was it, we said 316 degrees to fly out towards this hazel waypoint. So 2.9. We're in nav mode at the moment. We're going to go back to heading mode in order to make this happen. So we'll be moving the heading and the course. So we want this to go to 316. And then we'll move the heading bug as well. So the airplane's now going to start turning. We'll leave ourselves on a shallow angle actually intercepting it because we're going to we've gone a little bit early so we're now to the the right of the 316 degree radial which is now from the VOR station yeah so we're still tuned into Goodwood it is behind us and the 316 degree radial is to the left of us. So we are here somewhere. And we're probably not approaching it very quickly because of that wind. We've still got that 45 knot wind. <laughs> Let's go and turn into the wind to get onto the the line. When you get within one dot on the CDI, here it comes, you can go to nav mode. We can... Oh, it will do it now, look. It's already armed it. It's fine. 
So we're in nav mode now, so we can we got the freedom to change the heading bug to whatever we like. So the airplane's just gently rolling in to centre up the CDI for us. So remember, we want to fly 12 and a half miles. So we're at four miles out at the moment, and it's increasing, so you can see that. So we want to go out to 12 and a half. So the next thing we can do is get ready with the standby frequency for the Compton VOR 11435. So 11435. Oops. And we'll also do it on Nav 2. And we could switch Nav 2 already. And you can see there it goes. And we will be flying 343 degrees into Compton. So we can ch change the Omni Bearing Selector to 343 and say, look, it says it's, we're off to the right, which we are. We're over here. We're off to the right of that line at the moment. And it's wavering around. So we're seven miles out now from Goodwood. And again, because we the aeroplane has stabilised itself now, what we could do is just line up the heading bug. Put ourselves on heading mode. And then go and change this. So we're going to change it to 343 three degrees on the course. So 34... So then we can keep an eye on the distance measuring equipment because that hasn't changed. It's still just measuring how far away we are from the VOR. So at 12 and a half miles, we'll spin the heading bug round to change direction. Yeah, so now we're just coming up to 10 miles away. So we're about here on the line. And you can see the line for 343 is getting closer and closer. So we will switch the frequencies in a moment. There's coming up 11.3, let's do it. So let's swing the heading by ground. Go for nav mode, let it capture it itself. So we are now flying with 30 miles out from the Compton VOR. Make sense? Flying straight towards it. So we're on this line 30 miles out. So we're about here at the moment. So if we put a user point in. Now 29 miles out. So again, it's just counting the numbers down from this point on. So, in the same way we've done it previously, we could, if you wanted to, if you didn't have distance measuring equipment, you could, say, tune the NAV2 in, for example, into the Occam VOR over here. I think it's Occam. Yeah. 11530. So what we could do is... Tune nav two. Let's just keep an eye on this. Oh yeah, it's just straining up. What did we say it was? One one five point three zero. So on nav two, we're going to tune to one one five three zero. So you'll see this move. So what you can do then is tune or turn the omni bearing selector to find out what angle the VOR is from us. So if we were to travel at fifty five degrees from us or you can look across and say if you were to take a course of two th 240 degrees from Ockham that's where we are so if you go on the map and say measure and we want 240 degrees there we go so we know on nav one we're flying towards there on the on that radial and we know at that moment we were on that radial of Ockham so you can put another marker in the map 
you know, or pencil it in if you've got a, an old paper map. So you can triangulate using uh, VOR stations as well. So if you haven't, if you've got an airplane that doesn't have distance measuring equipment, then you can use that technique to do it. If you've only got one nav radio, it means you have to be quite quick and you're going to have a margin of error because you can't reference both radios at the same time. You know, you're going to have to switch from one radio station to the other and tune them, take your reading, switch to the other, <laughs> tune it, take a reading. But it just shows it's doable. So let's centre that heading up on the direction we're actually going. That wind is really blowing, isn't it? 40, 40 knots. Just out of interest, what was the wind on the ground at South End? If we just hover the mouse over in the nav map, it would give us the reading. So, yeah, oh, 18 gusting 28. So that's not great, is it? So what's happening with the wind... We're going to be passing Wickham Air Park, so we could shorten the route and come into Wickham. We're going to be almost on top of the pattern. In fact, we are, look. <laughs> That's funny. We will be, we'll go right over the top of the West Wickham turn for the pattern at Wickham Air Park, so we could cut the journey off at that point. That would be an interesting thing to do, actually, rather than just keep trudging around the VOR stations. How far have we got to go? 17 miles out until we make the turn at Compton. So what we could do then is say, if we were to measure this distance, so if we leave Compton, we, we should see West Wickham below us. And this is exactly the right path to come into the pattern. Because you make the turn at West Wickham towards the industrial estate and then into West Wickham, just to show you it on the map. What you would normally do is turn right here. We'll just draw it with the measure distance. You would do that, obviously with rounded corners on your turns, but and then you would do that. And you descend on the way around. So yeah, we could do that just for a bit of fun, I guess. So we're coming in 14 miles to go until we make our turn at Compton. So 11435. We've got that tuned in. Let's yeah, let's switch um nav two back over to Compton then. For the moment. So we're gonna leave Compton on 61 degrees. But we've got 12 miles to go until we get there. When we get a little bit closer, we'll switch over to, nav uh, to heading mode, which will free us up to change the course. And then we know that we need to travel for 18 miles. At 18 miles, we should make the turn into the pattern for Wickham Air Park. Makes it a bit more fun. Something to do along the way. So 10 miles to run until the turn at Compton. So we're 10 miles away from here at the moment, so if we measure backwards We were there. At the point we took the at the point we looked, basically. Eight miles to go. So obviously as we approach Wickham we'll be looking to descend to 1500 feet to begin with to go to traffic alt or to pattern altitude and then we'll get be getting rid of speed as well so getting into approach speed so below 120 knots basically for this aeroplane so we can get the below 180 we can put the wheels down in this plane below 120 obviously we can use the flaps 
Um, six miles to run. So let's go and switch this over to heading mode. So it's going to follow the heading mode now rather than try and stay on the on the um, the radial. And then we're going to switch the radial over to sixty to sixty one degrees. So four miles, counting it down. Again, we're on heading mode, so we can change the... Um, nearly did the wrong one then. Change this to 60 degrees. 61, I think we said, didn't we? Remember, we've got the wind pushing us, so we probably want... a few degrees less than that for our actual um, heading. But the course we're looking for was 61, wasn't it? So, two miles to go. So if we were to cut the corner off gently from two miles out to get onto the 61 radial degree radial from Compton There we go, it's just changed to from That's showing from now as well. So we're just on an intercept course to because we cut the corner off. So what we've done is turn before we got there. Obviously we're right down in that corner down there, but there we go, here comes the the track. to overrun it slightly. The reason the needle is moving so quickly is because we're only two miles away from the beacon. So any lateral movement is going to show up a lot when you're so close to it. Obviously if you're 30 miles away, some lateral movement across the line isn't going to affect it as much. So we can go nav mode. So it will hold the 61 degree course now automatically for us, regardless of heading mode. And we can start to think about when we get to how many miles out? 18 miles out, we should begin to see some familiar landmarks. So we're only five miles out at the moment. So let's slow the propeller down. hopefully bleed some speed off. I mean, we, we can reduce torque as, enormously as well. Look at the torque needle falling off as we pull the throttle back. Or we'll pull the power lever back, I should say. There we go, the speed is falling off now. So we need to come down to 1500 feet. That's interesting, look. How do we get this to go in hundreds? Oh, it's the small knob, isn't it? Yeah, so 1500 feet at 500 feet a minute, please. So we had the landing lights on the whole time, which is fine. We're going to go and put ignition back to on. And if you're doing this properly, you would put the, the boost pumps to on rather than auto. Eight miles to run until we see the landmarks that we're looking for. And we're falling down to 1,500 feet. So just out of habit, let's go and have a look, find out what the QNH is. Q1001. So we're slightly out with the barometric pressure. What's it saying? It's not giving us the... That's interesting, actually. So let's go and have a look in Navigraph. We've got open the airport for Booker 
and look at the weather and that's giving us 2956 so we are correct almost there we go yeah it's on the borderline between inches are more accurate than hectopascals but it, we're talking about a few feet difference so it's not you know anything to worry about too much Fourteen miles out. So there's Booker. So we are now looking for the visual landmarks. One of them is right here. So let's come off the autopilot now, shall we? So we're looking to maintain fifteen hundred feet. There's the airfield. There's the turning point of the main road. It's actually further over normally, yeah. The, there's a, a building, we're slightly to the right of where you would normally follow the traffic pattern, but we're not far away from it. You would be coming, it would be about 300 yards to the left of where we are. There's the turning point over there. But that's fine. So we're going to start dropping gently and losing some speed. We could get the, the undercarriage down to give ourselves some drag. So we turn towards 135. So we're looking for a thousand feet altitude before we make the turn in towards Wickham. So I haven't got head tracking on, have I? That might be useful. Way, what's going on? It's 155 degrees, isn't it? And we're at a thousand feet and we're going to start our turn towards Wickham, which is right there. So we're a little bit misplaced, but not too bad. Vertically correct. So the um, Vassy lights saying we're in the, pretty much the right place, so we're just managing airspeed now. Whoa, that wind really is turbulent, my word. I mean, it's disappearing as we get lower. Yeah, we could, we're being lifted into the air. I'm going to remove some of the flaps because we've got such a strong headwind. The flaps were causing us to kind of work like an elevator. Okay, and we're down. No need to use a beta on the propellers either. We were quite slow enough already. So flaps can come up. Get off the runway. Could do with putting the inertial separators on there. And roll into Wickham. That was interesting. The only reason I know the traffic pattern at Wickham so well is because I live just down the road from it and I've done a few videos about it in the past. It's got quite an interesting traffic pattern because, um, yeah, we're going a bit fast, aren't we? It's an interesting one because there's a noise abatement area, so it's got a kind of a wonky traffic pattern shape and you have to use visual reference points for the turns. So it makes for quite a good um, exercise in trying to do it accurately. OK, 
Okay, so... Taxi light on, landing light off. Strobes can come back off as soon as I can see them, but I'm not being blinded by the... Yeah, I did, I did get the strobe switch when I got blinded. Oh, there we go, we've got our usual um, marketplace aircraft that uh, sinks into the ground over there. I wish they'd fix that. Okay, parking brake on. Cut off the fuel, pull the propeller back. Didn't mean to do that with the throttle. Oh, it's being a pain, isn't it? Okay, so then we can just go around switching things back off again. I'll do this with the without head tracking because it's being a so-and-so at the moment. So ignition can go off. The generator can go off. Turn the gyros off. Turn the nav lights off. Turn the taxi lights off. Turn the auxiliary boost pump to off. Turn the fuel selector back to manual. Turn the bleed back to off. Air conditioning was off. We, oh, I didn't leave the didn't have the air conditioning on. That was a bit naughty. Um, the Peter heats can come off. The initial separator can come off. And I think we're pretty much oh the EFIS as well. <laughs> Always forget these things. And the AP master off. Radio master off. And then it's just power. And we're cold and dark. So I believe this aeroplane you can unlock the door and you get all the nice animations. Very cool. Right, hopefully you enjoyed that. So that was a little bit of looking at flying the TBM using playing around with the radios. There is no real correct way of combining the radios to navigate. You use them, you know, you use the tools at your disposal. And you can use them in whatever pragmatic way makes sense to use them. Um, but yeah, so we used a combination of different radios there. We avoided going anywhere near GPS. I think what might be, we might be able to do, which would be quite good fun, is now switch on the track and like, yeah it did record where we went so you can see there's a bit of a glitch there interesting but then you can see the actual track we flew where we were turning ahead of the turns here and there so you can see where we cut the corner there and then when we flew that little bit of the traffic pattern in yeah, and notice I said we were a bit to the right of where we should have been on the way in. And again, that's just that we were starting to wander away from the um, the radial. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you again soon.